Hello and welcome to Everything Iconic with me, Danny Pellegrino. I'm very excited. We have Ronan, who a lot of you might know from 911 Lone Star on Fox. Ronan, how are you doing today? I'm very, very good. I'm I'm good. How are you? Thank you for I'm, having me. I'm good. I'm excited to talk to you. I'm admittedly a little behind on my 911. So I'm in a different space than where the show is currently. Uh, but I'm going to be asking you about what's coming up. I'm super excited about that. Uh, first, though, I want to talk about you came out as bisexual, which I'm sure you must get asked this all the time last year in April. And you said it was largely because of the show. And I'm curious uh, how it's been since. What's the response been like uh, within the LGBTQ community? And also uh, welcome. Welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, man. Um, I think to say amazing would be like a massive understatement. Um it's been nothing but um, extremely welcome and extremely supportive and um, understanding. And, uh, you know, which is, it's interesting because I, I never, I never doubted that, you know, at least the majority of people would be really sweet and amazing and, and, um, and, and helpful through all of this. Um, it was more of sort of the people that I grew up with and, where I came from, that was sort of my biggest concern. Where are you uh, from? I'm from Staten Island, New York. Okay. Um, so a pretty conservative island. Um, so yeah, uh, but you know, that actually ended up being a really pleasant surprise as well. Um, so once that sort of cleared up and it wasn't easy at first, I'm, I'm going to be completely honest, but I think once that cleared up, it made everything a bit easier and I felt like I could breathe. Um, and, you know, it, it was really nice to hear messages from like my oldest friends who I honestly did not think they would be the most supportive. And they were the ones that actually wrote me like the most heartfelt, incredible stuff. Um, so that was really beautiful. Um, but as, 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 um, as for like, the people and like the masses, it's been unbelievable. Um, I talk to people multiple times a day from all over the world about what my coming out story has done for them and whether it has, you know, given them the confidence to come out or, or, or just be comfortable in their own skin and not necessarily feel like they need to come out to, you know, their family or friends or the world. Um, I think just the first step of being comfortable with yourself and then the rest sort of will follow. Um, so that's been really amazing, especially because, you know, it it varies. It's not just like young kids that are reaching out. It's like older people and older men, older women um, from, you know, Slovakia all the way to, you know, California. So when you're on a network show that reaches so many people. Exactly. Yeah. And and it's pretty amazing that your show has a lot of. LGBTQ actors on screen and seemingly behind the scenes as well. And I think it's pretty rare in the network space, even today. And, and that's a, a, a lot of what drew me to the show initially. It's, it's so amazing to get to see out characters uh, on a network procedural. I think it's, it's pretty revolutionary in weird ways and it shouldn't be. I wish we weren't saying that, but yeah. it's pretty yeah, cool. And you know, that, that always starts with our creator. You know, Ryan Murphy and Tim Minear, you know, they've been trailblazers, you know, especially Ryan. They, they've been trailblazers for for the LGBTQ plus community for probably nearly 20 something years now. You know, um, I'm, I'm actually funny enough watching Nip Tuck right now for the first time. And there are storylines in 2003 that would be probably edgy or, you know, challenging today and you know the fact that he started from day one and pretty much set a precedent it was like this is what i stand for and these are the stories that i'm going to tell take it or leave it and luckily the most major studios in the world have been taking it and they're massive successes and they're reaching such a massive um scope of people that you know people that may have never thought they would see themselves on on screen especially network television are finally seeing themselves and yeah. that reach is truly remarkable. And, you know, you, you also have to give props to the studio on the network, you know, for, for taking a risk. 
um, because a lot of people still think it's a risk, which is ridiculous. But it's crazy. Yeah. You know, we clearly see that there's an audience, which means that there's a market. And I think it's beautiful that we can finally tell these stories and for it to not be like, you know, edgy or or, or for it not to have to only be on like HBO or, or Showtime. You know, it's it's crazy that it's on your local Fox channel, which is yeah. it's saying a lot. Was there anything in my own experience? I remember sneaking certain shows. So when I was like in high school, I remember sneaking Queer as Folk, which was a Showtime show. And uh, I come from a very conservative Ohio family. And uh, yeah, I was so scared. And, And again, that's why representation is so important, because not only for the person watching at home, the kid who's maybe afraid to come out, but also for the other people around to see that it's a a normal life. I I remember watching brothers and sisters with my mom and it starred your TV dad, Rob Lowe. And there was a gay couple on there and it was so incredibly important for my parents and my mom to see a healthy, normal gay relationship uh, on a a network show like that. And it's just so important. So was there anything that you snuck around and watched? I mean, this might be kind of a crazy question, but did you ever watch something in, in, kind of feel like you wanted to come out or, or maybe is that so making there's, sense? there's, there's two, there's sort of when I was younger and more modern time, I think when I was younger, Frank Ocean for me is like one of the most important artists of our generation. And, and, and specifically for me too. Um, he's sort of the first, I guess, cultural icon that sort of, played with the idea that he was bisexual and I never really saw that on screen. So I resonated with him in in that sense. Um, I remember when the song Chanel came out and I was like, Oh my God, is this him coming out? And I I think that's been confirmed. Um, But so that was sort of my little secret for myself. You know, um, a lot of people were like, Oh yeah, Frank Ocean, his music. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. His music, you know, but he meant so much more to me than that. And, And I think, uh, more recently, I think when I saw Moonlight, uh, that movie shook me up. Um, I think I watched it like six times and I kept thinking to myself, I'm like, it's a brilliant movie, but it's like, why are you watching it so many times? You know, it's such a tragic, difficult film to, to watch. And I think the younger characters I sort of resonated with of like, you know, it, it is very much a secret in a community where it's not really accepted, you know? And um, I, I, I can relate to that a lot of sort of where I came from, you know, I came from a really tough place where you had to be this like tough macho man and we would get into street fights and like, you know, getting girls was like an objective. And like, you know, we hung around with the wrong crews and, and for someone to even insinuate that someone might be gay or, bisexual or attracted to men like you would truly get your ass kicked like brutally and like the f word was thrown around all the time you know so like growing in that growing up in that environment as a kid it's terrifying you know you really have to like push down any um feeling that you have come up and so that was really weird man for me growing up and it wasn't until i started acting that i was actually introduced to more people of the community you know I didn't even know that there was an LGBTQ community until I was like, I don't know, maybe 19 or 20 when I started like leaving Staten Island and started hanging out in the West Village, you know, and my mind was blown and my world was so massive all of a sudden. And I felt so welcomed. And um, so that sort of world for me was my way of like keeping it to myself. You know, it's like my parents were like, where are you going? I I wouldn't necessarily say I was going to the West village. I would say, you know, I was just, I was going to the city. Um, so yeah, that was sort of my experience with that kind of stuff. Well, you know, before we got on here, I was thinking about all the questions I wanted to ask you and I was imagining you're doing this uh, brilliant work on nine one one Lone Star and thank you. And you must be very excited to talk about it. And then oftentimes I'm sure interviewers are asking you about this coming out. And so I just want to say thank you on behalf of the kids who were like myself, who are in these areas who maybe they still don't feel comfortable uh, being bisexual or being uh, out or who they are in any sense. I think it, it's still so important for people to tell these stories and, and where they come from and, 
what they've learned from and grown from. And, and so thank you, even though I'm sure it must get frustrating for you sometimes to always have to talk about it. No, I, first of all, I, I really appreciate that. And second of all, I don't think the word frustrated would ever go along with what's been going on. Um, I'm, I'm in no place or form to, to be frustrated with people wanting to talk about it. You know, I mean, whenever you come out to the masses and you have a platform, I mean, you're almost asking it, you're almost asking for it in a way. So, you know, I, I, I expected this sort of um, reception. And I, I think the more I talk about it, the more people I could reach, you know, and um, especially because there's people from all over the world that are either listening to what I'm talking about or reading what I'm talking about and then obviously watching the show. So I think if me talking about it often is going to help people, then, uh, I mean, of course I'm going to do it. You know, it's, it's not like, oh, can we not talk about it? Let's talk about the show. Um, I think at this point it, come, it kind of comes with the territory and it's, um, it's kind of an honor to be able to sort of be a voice for, for the bisexual community and, and just, and just to support the LGBTQ plus community um, as much as we can, because I mean, we clearly see what's going on in the country and around the world. We need as much support as possible. Um, So I I never feel that like there's never a sense of frustration, but there's Um, still such a stigma attached uh, to bisexual, especially when it comes to men. And I, I'm so grateful. There's people like you talking about it because we need that. It's so interesting because, because the, the people that resonate as, as being bisexual, they, they make up the highest percentage of the LGBTQ plus community. And you would think there would be more support or more people speaking out or more stories being told since it does make up such a massive percentage, you know? Um, and I still today, like, I, I don't see as much characters who are bisexual as, as I would like. Um, and maybe that's something that I could start maybe pushing or, you know, sort of speaking out against because even in like older, older stuff, which is only like five to 10 years old, it's like, if, if we see a character who's either female or male, and let's say she's, she cheats on her husband with a woman, all of a sudden, like they strictly call her lesbian, you know, or vice versa. Like there's no, they never give us the option or even write the option of like, maybe she's bisexual, maybe he's bisexual. Like it's very common. Um, so uh, yeah, you know, there's, there's that aspect of it that I guess that's frustrating. I I would say that's, that's the frustrating aspect. Um, but who knows, maybe, you know, maybe the louder I am, the, the more, the more things could happen. What are your going forward? What are some dreams? Do you have dream roles? Are there dream projects? Like what, what are you hoping to do next? Well, funny enough, like in less than 48 hours, I'm launching uh, my band, which I was going to ask you about the song. I love the song, but from what I've heard. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So that's, that's really crazy. Cause that's a whole different um, sort of world. And it's so personal because there's, let's say five people involved instead of hundreds. And it's like, it feels very much like your baby. And, you know, I write the lyrics and I sing, so it's, it's very intimate and personal to me, but people are, are really excited about it. So that's, that's really reassuring. But I think from maybe touching on what we spoke, you know, there's, there's a lot of, I think it's even before the golden age of acting, like before the fifties, there's a lot of actors who were secretly very bisexual and they were out in their, let's say in their circles, but publicly, you know, we can never talk about it. And now more and more there's stories coming out. Like uh, uh, the most famous one that I know so far is Gary Cooper, who was like John Wayne before there was John Wayne. And he is, very publicly now known to be bisexual. And he was this like six foot five leading man cowboy who was always supposed to get the girl. And then we find out that he was like one of the first bisexual actors in Hollywood um, to sort of be comfortable with it, at least amongst his peers. So there's stories like that that are always circulating. Not to interrupt you, but I just learned about Marlon Brando. Are you familiar with his story? 
I didn't know. So I, I had I gotten a chance to see an advance of that Pam and Tommy show um, that's going to be on Hulu, which was phenomenal. I, I, I loved it, obsessed with it. But there's one quick line where they mentioned something about this, this picture or video of Marlon Brando. And so I started doing some digging and there was like a, there was an image of Marlon Brando with a penis in his mouth. And it's uh, alleged to be true. People can look it up if they want to learn a little bit about this, but it's Marlon Brando who everyone thinks of as sort of stereotypical masculine who was allegedly, we, you know, there's, it's still some confusion with I mean, I don't know how if he you labeled see, himself, but I don't know if you can see the guy behind me, but James Dean was known to be with a lot of men as well, you know, and again, he was the, you know, the leading man that was supposed to get the girl. So I think there, the fact that there's still such a stigma about it. Um, and, you know, there are so many brilliant stories that we probably don't know about yet. Um, but, you know, all we need to do is just, is look for it. Um, and I think if we look hard enough, I think we'll find them like the, like the whole, the, the Gary Cooper stories blew my mind. I mean, he was literally like Clint Eastwood and Bruce Wayne before they, they were alive. Um, so there's, there's a lot of stories to be told and, um, you know, it would be something that I'm very, very interested in. Okay. So you would play the Gary Cooper. Would you do that? If we, I would, I would, oh, yeah, I let's would make that happen. I mean, I would love to, um, you know, I would probably need like uh, eight inch stilts, but um, he's, he's very tall. Look, if but, Tom um, Cruise can play Jack Reacher, we can make that happen. Yeah, I guess, I guess. So, right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I would definitely, I would definitely want to play Gary Cooper. Um, what's I'm switching gears pretty quickly. What's Rob Lowe like? Cause I love Robert Lowe, but I hope he's, is he nice? Do we like him? He's a man that has been doing this for so long. I think it's like second nature to him and um, he's very professional. He comes to set. He wants to work. He wants to work well. Um, and then he wants to go home to his family. Um, I think one big thing that maybe not a lot of people know is that he's a very devoted family man. And I think because he's been in the limelight and so busy for nearly 40 years, I think he's, really trying to um, uh, sort of enjoy as much time with his family as he can, um, especially because his boys are like my age and, you know, they're very independent and um, he's uh, he's very devoted to his family. So he comes in, does his work and then he's out. <laughs> I get that. I get that. Uh, what's to come for your character on 911? What's going on with Tarlos? Do you watch all the videos and stuff? The two of you, your characters have all these me like video memes and all sorts of stuff online. Like it's wild. There's, uh, there is so much, Danny. That since since our first trailer dropped in twenty, what was that? Twenty nineteen, I get no twenty, yeah, twenty nineteen, and it's us barging into the apartment making out. I mean, from that moment on, Tarlos turned into this like monster marketing thing. Um, so it's been unbelievable. Uh, there, there's too many videos and memes and gifs to try to, to catch up on. Uh, but I see a lot of it and, you know, I'm, I'm one of those crazy people that reads comments and, um, that's a mistake, really, Ronan. That's a mistake. Well, what are you doing? I would say 99% They're all people good though. Really, yeah, for really amazing actually. And, it also makes me um, aware of, you know, the really, really vile people that I could just quickly block. And, um, you know, we, we don't want that kind of energy um, when we're doing something so, so wonderful. Um, but in terms of so, the Tarlos relationship, I do feel like they're all 99% really, everyone's just excited to have this relationship on screen and everyone loves watching the two of you together. You have great chemistry. 99.8%. Nine, so it's, yeah. it's unbelievable. Um, especially now cuz you know we threw a massive u turn in this season and we um we broke up off screen so people are trying to figure out why do we break up are we going to get back together and on top of all that I'm now in a coma and Carlos is he's by my bedside um not knowing if I'll live or not um, okay but you're living right you're not leaving the show right Spoiler alert, I live. <laughs> okay, okay, you're living. And then will you, you guys will get back together too. I think I was reading something about like, they're going to be together. 
So you can you confirm that you're gonna <laughs> confirm it for us? I I all I can confirm is that I really hope so. Um, but I don't know when or where or how if that happens. Okay. Uh, what else do we have to look forward to for the season? What can you tell me? Anything you could spoil? Nothing that I could spoil, but I have been um, talking about that this season, the writers, specifically Tim Minear, blessed me with the most unbelievable storyline. Um, and it's a episode a little further down the road, um, which we shot already. Uh, and it's my proudest work to date, um, especially as TK. Um, but it was the most challenging mentally and physically work I've ever done in my life. And, um, it is such a gift, uh, to be able to do something like that. Um, and it is so not procedural network television. Um, we really are changing things up this season and I think just elevating everything across the board. Um, so that I'm really looking forward to. That was truly something special. Uh, Ryan Murphy's known for sort of using his actors in so many different projects. Well, I know you appeared in American Horror Stories. Mm -hmm. Will you be doing more of that or or is there other stuff you're doing with, with him? I sure hope so. I mean, it all happens so mysteriously. I mean, with American Horror Stories, the spinoff, he literally called me out of nowhere. And was like, hey, are you uh, are you busy in two weeks? And I was like, nope. He's like, All right, I got a cool role for you. And I was like, where do I sign? <laughs> and it and it literally happened just like that. Um, so, you know, the the cool thing with Ryan is that he'll call you if if he if he has something for you. Um, so we'll see. I like that. Um, okay, I ask all of my guests these next two questions. They're sort of cheesy pop culture questions, but uh, what's your favorite Mariah Carey song? And then also, if you were choosing for People Magazine's Sexiest Man Alive, who would you choose? So Mariah Carey song is the one with Busta Rhymes. Baby, if you give it to me, I can do That song was on repeat when I was younger, for sure. Um, and then if I had to choose people's sexiest man alive um i think i gotta go with leonardo dicaprio which um has he been he's been sexiest man alive right i feel like he must have around i feel like back in the day he was right with titanic i feel like he i feel like he has to and i think the sexiest thing about that man is what he's doing for the planet and um if we had more leos i think we'd be in a better place right now with the with the with the world. Um, but obviously he's still very good looking and his work is unbelievable. <laughs> I'm into like the older Leo too. I know a lot of people like when he was, but I, I like the, like he's sort of morphing into Jack Nicholson and I find it in a sexy way. I'm Ooh. into it. Yeah. I like it. Uh, Ronan, that is a very interesting observation. Yeah. Okay. Tell us about the music, anything else you want to plug? So the music, it's my, my debut as a band we're called nights in stereo um and we are debuting our first single open door this friday at 12 a.m on spotify um and it's uh it's something that we've been working on since um the heat of the pandemic in 2020 and we're finally able to um release music and uh it's with and my the preview is good the preview is good i'm not to interrupt yeah. you but like i I was sort of pressing play and I was like, oh, this won't be good. And then it, I was like, oh my God, it's good. <laughs> and then we just released 15 more seconds today so people could get a little bit more of a taste of the music. Um, but it's it's literally me and my two dear friends. And um, we hope to continue putting out music. And then eventually, the you know, if we could play in front of people, that's sort of the ultimate goal. And uh, it's something that we are really excited about. And we we are really proud of. I think it sounds pretty damn good. So exciting. Well, congratulations on all of your success. I look forward to seeing more. And it was such a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, you Roman. Where can people find you on social media? Uh, my first and last name. Very there simple. You go, Ronan Rubinstein. Yeah. Thank you so much. Have a great day, Ronan. Thank Thanks, you. Danny.